right, everybody. This is kind of a brainchild of Binge and myself. Um, this is an 8B full graphite pencil, full meaning that it doesn't have any wood on the outside. But what it does have is plastic of some sort. So I'm cutting that off. It's plastic paint. And we have our exposed allotrope of carbon or graphite and it's 90% pure carbon with 10% clay which isn't ideal but it's about as best you can do over the counter so you can break it to your liking and it's pretty messy that's why gloves are recommended but I had to take my glove off to peel off some of that paint so it's under my fingernail it's fun stuff uh, some of the tools you're gonna need and equipment is a thermometer a measuring utensil or spoon sodium carbonate or soda ash and you can make that by baking baking soda <laughs> or baking sodium bicarbonate and uh, essentially cooking out the hydrogen and you can do that you can look online for that but it's basically 400 degrees in the oven for four or five hours you should do it so now i'm measuring out one liter of distilled water and uh, it's an approximation all these will be an approximation flask I have has a 5% margin of error at 500 milliliters and I'm just measuring out two of those. So. Do the best you can with what you got. You're going to need a power supply of I recommend 300 volts DC you could do this with an AC source but the potential is gonna to have to be much higher and I haven't experimented with it personally it's just from some of the literature I've read if you are in Europe you can hook up appropriate full bridge full wave bridge rectifier to your mains and it should work just safety in mind, you know, always keep safety in mind. So I'm not responsible for any property damage or personal harm, but I definitely care about you guys. Don't want anyone to get hurt. So, so now you're gonna need to heat up, heat this up. If you have a stir heater, that would be fantastic. I don't, uh, but I'll construct one and buy a little Teflon stir or something. So you can put it on your stove top or you can chuck it in the microwave, which is what I'm gonna do here. Put it in for about three minutes and 30 seconds. It's a little bit of overkill, but preferably, and it's actually crucial to the reaction, is you want, you want your cell temperature to be over about 33 degrees centigrade or Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit from stateside folk. And anything above that is, is okay, you just don't want it to drop below that. Stir it, balance it, balance it out. We're about 50, 54 degrees centigrade or Celsius. It's about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is well within range. Now we're going to add sodium carbonate soda ash. And it 
will make a strong solution of sodium hydroxide and a weak solution of carbonic acid, which kind of balances out and makes, seems to make not such, not a very strong, I'm drawing a blank, not very strong base or caustic solution. It's kind of balances it, which is nice. And uh, the CO3 anion is important to this reaction. I'm sorry, cat, <laughs> cat, cat ion, not anion. My apologies. Should see why. That's the hypothesis behind it, anyways, is that it helps create this reaction of fine carbon particulate. So we put in our electrodes, and it's good to prepare them, maybe give them a rinse and some rubbing alcohol just to eliminate any oils or contaminants. And then you want to put your cathode up on the surface tension of the water. It reduces the current flow because the current is directly proportional to the surface area of your electrodes. And the plasma reaction is going to occur on the cathode. You can make the plasma reaction occur on the anode. It's just a little more difficult because of oxidative, oxidization state and stuff. The hydrogen seems to ignite a lot easier than the oxygen. And for other reasons. And this is uh, a 9XA board that was donated to me, to me by Max Miller. And I appreciate that, man. It's awesome. And I'm just, it's just driving an SCR. And this is for uh, pulse, and pulse width modulating, which isn't really necessary for this particular carbon allotrope for, this, for graphite uh, because it breaks away pretty easily. But for the carbon rods that I recycled, that I pulled out of some D cell battery, it it really helps in alleviating the, the buildup of carbon on the anode, which seems to stop uh, stop the exfoliation into the water. And that solution is even more interesting. That final product is even more interesting. The one I'm a little more excited about, but this is this is one experiment. I don't, I don't think I'll have any synthetic diamonds to be playing with or any other allotropes. But now we have our plasma reaction and you can see the, the particles being, being molecularly exfoliated, perhaps monoatomically, but I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that low. The process will need to be refined more, I'm sure, but it sure beats ball milling it for a couple of days and stuff like that. It speeds up the process a lot, unless you have a powder form, which is, this process isn't going to help you too much. And it's important to put your feedstock in, in in the cathode. It's kind of like a feedstock. It's a sacrificial cathode. It slowly it's broken apart by the reactions of strong collisions on its surface. And you can experiment with micro arc exfoliation. I just like to use the higher heat and break it free that way. It's it's all experiment it's still very experimental so in its infancy of an idea. This is testing the microwave radiation tri-field meter, and there doesn't seem to be much microwave radiation. When I switch it to the electrical field, small electrical field, and then when I touch it, uh, because of my grounding effect, it, I can pass it because of all of the electromagnetic radiation that's all around my bench from the auto transformer, the cell itself. So you can see I'm using the pulse width very slow, slow on-off times, 
just experimenting with it. This is my second run with the graphite, and it did, I didn't notice any difference between the two. So. But it is important for the carbon rods, which I'll do another video on after I really get that one down. I've done that one probably about four times now, but different solutions and just some different experiments. And you can see the magnetic field is very strong, so I wouldn't recommend hanging around this and doing this all the time. I, I'm, the reason why I use a pulse width modulator and stuff is to, is to automate it as much as possible. Not standing right, stand right. So now this is just some really crude current measurements. The voltage is about 420 volts, and our, our rough current is has shown, but the phase shift on the electrode really gives kind of false readings because you're have, basically having an oscillator in the cell, in a sense, changing frequency. So this is just some visual inspection. You can see a, a layer material on the top, and I'm just using a laser um, because Red Rake did it. <laughs> because it's a good visual inspection to see kind of the refraction and reflection properties and absorption properties of this stuff. And laser is freaking cool. So. <laughs> but you can see it, it reflects off the water on the surface pretty, pretty easily than when you put it on the, the top surface. Cleaved graphite. Stir and clean up. I'm just going to filter it out. I have a 400 mesh stainless steel. filter it out further. Uh, I'm going to filter out after I take out, this is my first round filtering, and then I'll wait for it, the cell to settle and do pour, a pour-off method. So I'll pour off and add more distilled water to, to try to eliminate most of the sodium contaminant. Or you can keep it in and use it as is. Completely up to you, whatever your, your experiment that you're planning on this particular material. And the carbon rod has been sitting for about four or five days now and it still has not settled so that's going to be a little more challenging but it's also a little more exciting. The top seems to broke it up a little bit and break it up a little bit here. It's little little clumps and chunks, but the yield's pretty decent. I can break that up and filter it further, or, but I'm just gonna leave it out. I'm just going to do a little white test here. My natural glove. And you see when I do this, it gives it a pretty good sheen. Pretty, pretty even across. This pretty much wraps up the video. So I appreciate you guys taking the time. I hope this helps somebody of some interest. Thanks a bunch, guys.